lessons and we're going to start with the first half of the chapter round. The, we're going to start with the second half, the last 15 questions of the sprint round. But before that, was were there any particular questions on the first 15 questions of the chapter round that anyone needed or wanted to be explained? No. 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 All right, then I suppose we'll get started on number 16. So what is everyone's answer for number 16 of the chapter? 10 inches square. 10, 10, 10 inches square. 10 inches square. 10 inches square. 10 inches square. Yep, it's 10. Because the square has a side length of five inches. And they're divided into segments of one inch. So one, two, three, four, five. So the area of the little square is one. And then the area of the first black strip is the area of the side of the square with side two minus that inner square. So it is three. And then by that same logic, the area of the white band is not is three squared minus two squared or five. Um, I just joined. What are we doing right now? Chapter number 16 on the sprint round. Okay. And then we have to subtract the area of the square with side four minus the area of the square with side three. So that's 16 minus nine or seven. And we have our answer because it's the sum of the areas of the shaded stripes. So it's three plus seven or 10. There's a lot of similar questions like this, not with squares, but with circles. And whenever it goes up by one, then two, then three, then four, the areas are of the corresponding regions are always the consecutive odd numbers. So, does anyone have any questions about this? No. 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 All right. So for number 17, what was everyone's answer? Five. 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 So what are those numbers? 11, 31, so the numbers are 11, 21 isn't, prime, 31 is, 41 is, 51 is 17 times 3, so that's not prime, 61 is, 71 is, 81 is not, and 91 is 13 times 7. So the answer is five two-digit prime numbers that have one as the unit digit. Um, where are we right now? Number 17. Okay. No, just doing the last 15 questions. So what is everyone's answer for 18? 40 laps. 40, 40 laps. 40 laps. 40 laps. Yeah. It's 40 laps. You can just set up an algebraic equation. So it's $10 plus the 0.1 cents, 0.1 laps, we'll just call laps x, and that's equal to the 35 cents times the number of laps Mira walks. And that's the total amount donated for both people. So now we just solve the equation. So we subtract 0.1x from both sides and we get that 10 equals 0.25x. And if you don't want to deal with decimals, then just multiply it both sides by 100. And you get 1,000 divided by 25 equals 25x. So then both sides are divided by 25. So x equals 40. And then if you check your answer, 35 cents times 40 is $14. And then 0.1 times 40 is 4, and 4 plus 10 is 14. So the answer works in the equation. 
and the answer is 40. Any questions? No. No. No questions. So what is everyone's answer for 19? 12 ways. 12 ways. 12 ways. There are 12 four. ways. Four. 12 ways for 19. Seven. Four ways. Four. So yes, the answer is four. So we don't really need to worry about these blank digits. We just need to ensure that we get that the sum of a and three is greater than 10. It, so that one can carry over to the four plus five to make a thousand. So nine works because nine plus three is 12. So one will carry over. Eight works because 11 and then the one will carry over. Seven works because seven plus three is 10 and then the one carries over to the four. And then we can't stop there because if these two digits add up to a number greater than 10, say it's nine and eight, then that's going to be 17. And then one and then then one can carry over. So A by that logic can also be six because then it will be 10 and then one can carry over again to the four and it'll be five plus five or 10 and it'll be greater than a thousand. So our four possible values are nine, eight, seven, and six, because nine, eight, and seven carry over a one. And then six is possible if the unit digits are greater, add up to a number greater than 10. So the answer is four. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 All right. So what is everyone's answer for 20? Three and a half. 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 Yep. Because zero inches on the second ruler corresponds to two and a half inches on the first ruler. So we want to find if the top ruler is six inches, what will the bottom ruler be? So we just subtract six from two, two and a half, and we get three and a half. And that's our answer, because we just need to find out where on the sec on the first ruler the second ruler is placed, and then subtract to find our corresponding measurement. And any questions? No. Oh. Yep. So what is everyone's answer for 21? Five, eight, So yes, the correct answer is 59,172 because we want to find the five digit, greatest five digit integer that's a multiple of six with these conditions. So a multiple of six means it's divisible by three and two. And since it ends in two, it's already divisible by two. So we just need to make it divisible by three. So what is the divisibility rule for three? Add them all up and they should be divisible. Yeah, the sum of the digits has to be divisible by three. So currently the sum of the digits is eight. And then the maximum possible sum of the two digits, if they're nine and nine, is 18. So the maximum sum of the total five digit number what is 26, which means that the maximum multiple of three that can be attained is 24. And that means that the two blank lines have to add up to 16, which can happen in, some, in, a, in, a, in a few ways. So you can have 
eight and eight, seven and nine, or nine and seven, in that order. And, we, and since you want to maximize it, we place the nine in the thousands place, and then the seven in the tens place. So our maximum possible value multiple of six is 59,172. The others, others are possible, but this is the maximum. So, any questions? No. No questions. All right. So what is everyone's answer for 22? Seven. 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 So yeah, seven is the answer. So what we do is we look at different powers of three. So three to the fifth is 243, much smaller. Three to the sixth is 729. And three to the seventh is 729 times three or 2187. So then we know that it has to be something in between. So we'll need to test the halfway mark, three to the six and a half power. And that seems hard, but all we have to do is multiply three to the sixth times root three, because any, any square root is that number to the half power. And, and just for the ease of multiplication, we can round three to the sixth. We can round root three to two because it's 1.73. And then 729 times two is 1458, which by itself is less than 1500, which means that whatever the value of X is, it's greater than six and a half, meaning that the integer it's closest to is seven. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what is everyone's answer for 23? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 lines. 20 lines. Oh, 20 lines. So the answer is 20 lines. So we want to find how many different lines pass through at least two of the nine points in the grid below. So that means that we can do nine choose two as, as our starting value before we look for any possible overcounting. So can anyone tell me what nine choose two is? 36. 36. 36. Yep. So now we have to look at overcounting. So how many different ways are there for a point for points to be in the same line? Eight. So yeah, there are eight ways for points to be in the same line because they can be in diagonals, in the two diagonals, the three rows and the three columns. So that's eight ways. And then since we're only looking at at least two of the points, there's three ways for two points to be chosen that are on the same line. So that would be three, choose two, or three. So at first glance, we have 24 ways that we're over counting. But there's no restriction saying that the points can't be on the same line. So we just need to remove our, we just need to remove, we just need to account for the points being on the same line once because it doesn't matter if it's this, if it's these points or these points, or these points and these points in the end, if it's on the same line. Because regardless of which points they are, it's still this line. 
that forms. So we can subtract away 16 of these and just account for the diagonals, and the rows, and the columns once. So, so we subtract away 8 from our overcounting. And then now we know that we need to subtract 16 away to make sure we are only counting the lines once. And we get 20. Any questions? No. No questions. All right. So what is everyone's answer for 24? Negative one. Negative one. Negative one. Negative one. Negative one. 51. So the answer is negative one. And there's two ways we can do this. So one way is we just want to find the sum of the coefficients in the final constant. So we can plug in one, just we can make x one, so it doesn't matter what x is anymore. And then, and then regardless of what x is, we get x just is gonna cancel out, and then we get a three plus a two plus a one plus a zero. So into our equation, two x minus three cubed, we make x one, and then we can find the sum of what of whatever's left, because then that's the value of what we want to find. Yeah. So that's negative one cubed or negative one. But just for the sake of con con confirming, let's expand it and see if 2x minus 3 cubed actually is negative one. And there's what and how you do that is like this. So first we need to find the coefficients. And the coefficients of this expansion are related to Pascal's triangle. So Pascal's triangle goes like this. 1, 11, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 4, 1, 1, and so on and so forth. So the rows of Pascal's triangle are also the rows of the coefficients of expansions. So for example, when we do x plus one squared, that's x squared plus two x plus one. And our coefficients are one, two, and one. So by that same logic, can anyone guess what the coefficients are of this expression? One, three, three, one. One, five, five. Two and three. Two and seven. So first of all, the number of terms when, when you're expanding any binomial is one more than the power. So we're going to have four terms. And our coefficients initially of the algebraic expression before we plug in and simplify are going to be one, three, three, and one. So we'll just write one. So we'll just write out one, three, three, and one to start with. And keep it positive again, just to make it easier before we simplify. So then we can think of it like a railroad track. So x, we start with x cubed, but then x cubed goes down from x squared to x to the first to x to the zeroth, or one. And then, by the, then y goes the opposite way, from y to the zeroth to y to the first to y to the y squared to y cubed. So let me just write that down, and then we'll continue. So first our coefficient is one, and then we have x cubed. And then we have x going down one and y going up one. So three x squared y. And then by that same logic, can anyone tell me what the second, what the variables would be for the second three? Three x, three x, x, y squared. X, y squared? Yeah, it would be three x, y squared. And then what would our final variables be? 3y cubed. It's y cubed. 
y cubed. Yep, y cubed. So we can use this as our base to expand. But it's not x in this case, it's 2x. So that means that the 2 will be cubed and squared and multiplied. So our coefficients aren't going to be simple 1, 3, 3, and 1. They're going to be 1, 3, 3, and 1 times whatever the cubed and squared numbers are. So one, so can anyone tell me what the first term of our new expansion would be if we plug 2x in? 8. Eight. Eight. Yeah, 8. Yeah, 8x cubed. And then, can anyone tell me what our second term would be? You can use, It would be 12, but I have to be careful about the signs because since y is negative 3, it's negative, negative. yeah, it would be negative, negative 36. So it would be, if we write it out, plus 3 times 2x squared times the y being negative 3. So we can simplify that to 3 times 4 times negative 3 or negative 36x squared. The, the trickiest part of these expansions is keeping track of the numbers and making sure you multiply correctly. So what would the next term be? Um, 27 x. 27 x. 54 x. 27 x. 54. It would be 54 x. Because we have 3 times 2 x times negative 3 squared. So then it's not negative because the negative squared is positive and we have 3 times 2 times 9 x so that's 54 x and then what would our final y term be negative 27 negative, negative 27. 27 negative 27 that's correct so now that we have our expansion we can add up our coefficients and check to make sure that we're right so our positive terms are 8 and 54 minus 636 minus 27. So that's 62 minus 63 or negative one. So we're right. And in the real math counts, you probably don't have the time to do all this, but knowing how to expand things like this is a really good skill in math. So that's what we're doing. So does anyone have any questions about the expansion? No. All right, so what is everyone's answer for 25? 3,055. All right, so how you do this question is based on cross-sectional areas because the areas of the pipes at the bottom, which affects how many marbles can go through, can form ratios, and based on those ratios, you can decide how many marbles go through. So we don't know the diameters. We don't know the diameters of the initial pipe, so, so that doesn't really matter because 10,000 marbles go through anyway. So based on that, we're going to do ratios. So can anyone tell me what is the total areas of these cross-sectional areas of the first branch of pipes. Is 10 the radius? 10, it, these, all the numbers are the diameters. Oh, diameters. 25 pi, 100 pi. Yes, so now we can use the cross-sectional areas. So we so based on this is the total areas of the pipes. So we can use each individual area over the sum of their areas to see what fraction of the marbles 
and correspondingly how many marbles will go to the first pipe. So if one fifth of the marbles will go through the left pipe, how many marbles is that out of the 10,000? 2,000. 2,000. 2,000. 2,000. And how much will the other branch be? 8,000. 8,000. And now we can apply that same logic for the second branch. So what is the combined area of all of the, of the cross-sectional areas for the second branch? The, these two numbers. Um, 225 pi plus 25 pi. 225 pi plus 25 pi. So yeah, that would be 250 pi. And then we have for the branch that we want, the bottom middle pipe, what, what's the area of that? Which bottom middle pipe? This. Oh. 25 pi plus 25 pi. 50 pi. So that's 25 pi because this is just showing the branching twice for both ways that go into the middle, bottom middle pipe. So it's one tenth. So can anyone tell me what's one tenth of the marbles that go into the second, into the leftmost initial pipe? 200. 200. Yes, 200. So now we can do something similar for the right pipe. So what is the combined area of the, I'm gonna erase some of the circles now, of this 10 and 20 rightmost pipe? 125 pi. 125 pi. So what fraction of the marbles goes through the leftmost? One fifth. Yep, one fifth. One fifth. Since 8,000 marbles go to the rightmost pipe, what is one fifth of 8,000? 1,600. 1,600. Yeah. So our answer is 1,800 marbles because we can use the cross sectional areas and go through the pipe until we find out the, pro the number that goes through the bottom middle. And when we go from the left side and the right side, that adds up to 1,800. So does anyone have any questions? No. No. No questions. No. All right, so what is everyone's answer for 26? 78 prisms. 76. 189. All right, so we need to find how many prisms are, can happen in, can occur, how many little mini prisms of all sizes, including the big prism, are in the three times four times five rectangular prism. So. So this here is a rectangular prism. And the dimensions are three times four times five. And that it's not in scale, but that's fine. So what we have to do is try to try to use a clever way to find the number of prisms without physically counting every single one of them. So just for the sake of simplicity, let's look at each edge. So the three edge, let's just imagine this is the edge. One, two. So how many different lines are there, including the borders, in this edge with the length of three? Four. 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 Six. Four. Four. So when we're choosing a length for the prism, we're, we're in reality choosing two of these edges. So we can do four choose two, which is? Six. 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 We have a number of ways to choose an edge or length for this edge. So we can do something but of similar logic for the four edge and the five edge. So one, two, three. So how many ways are there to choose a segment for the five for the four edge? Ten. 
10. Okay. 10. Yeah, 10, because we have five different edges, including the borders to choose from, and we want to choose two of them. So five choose two, or five times four divided by two is 10. And by that same logic, well, how many ways would there be for the five edge? 15. 15. 15. 15. Yeah, because it's six choose two. So now we have the number of ways to choose a segment for each dimension. And now we can just multiply it. Six times 10 times 15 is the number of ways to choose a segment for each dimension. So we multiply it for all the dimensions and we get the number of possible prisms or 900, which is why it's impossible to physically count all the prisms. Does anyone have any questions? No. 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 All right, so what is everyone's answer for 27? 41 out of 40, 31. Three out of five. 45 over 126. 13 over 21. So yeah, the correct answer is 13 over 21. And we're going to start with the total number of possibilities, assuming there are no restrictions. So there are 10 possible seats. And we want to see how many ways six students can be seated. So do, doing 10 choose six is the same thing as doing 10 times 10, 10 choose four. That's general property of combinations. So we're just going to do 10 choose four. So what is 10 choose four? 420. 420. 420. 470. 420. It's 210 because it's 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 divided by 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or 24. So you can cancel the 24 and the 72, but you get 3. So it's 10 times 3 times 7, or 10. And now we want to look at the different possible cases. So, so one case could be that 3 are full two, and 2 are empty. Another case would be that two are full, two have one person on them, and then one is empty. And then our final probability possibility is that one is full and four have one person on them. And what we want is the probability that at least one bench is completely empty. So we want to find the probability of the first two. And the easiest way to do that would probably be co complementary counting. That is, so find the probability of the third case, what we don't want, and subtract it from one, and we'll get what we do want. So how many ways are there to pick a full bench? Um, five. Five, because we have five full benches, five possible benches. And then we have four benches that have one person seated on them. So if a bench has two seats, how many ways are there to pick a seat for a bench? Six. Two, because let's just imagine this is a bench. If one person is trying to pick a seat, then there's two possible ways to pick a seat because there's two seats. And there's four benches where that situation occurs. So we would do five times two for the, num the ways to choose a seat, times two again, times two, times two. So it's five times two to the fourth because there's two possibilities for each bench that is partially occupied. So it equals 80. And now we do 1 minus 80 over 210, or 130 over 210, which is 13 over 21. Complementary counting is a very useful tool if you have things that are inefficient to do combinations for. Because oftentimes what you don't want is easier to find than what you do want. Any questions about this problem? No. No. 
No. All right. So what is everyone's answer for number 28? Eight. 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 And eight is correct. So what is the total area of this square? Six. Six meters square. And by that logic, what is the side length of this square? Root six. That's correct. So now we can deal with the shape in the middle because it's the easiest shape to look at and it has the side X. So the area of this is two and we can see if we draw a line in the middle that it forms two right triangles. And we know the formula for the area of a triangle. So half of x, and let's call this short side y, half of x times y equals one, because each triangle is half of the whole kite shape, and two divided by two is one. So we multiply both sides by two, and we get that xy equals two. And because we want to find x, let's define everything in terms of x. So y equals two over x. And now we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So the diagonal of the kite is root six because, or that the diagonal of the kite and the hypotenuse of the triangle is root six because it's just the side of the square. So we can set up x squared plus two over x squared equals six. And we simplify that x squared plus four over x squared equals six. And then to get rid of the denominator again, we multiply everything by x squared. So we get x to the fourth plus four equals six x squared. And now we bring everything to one side. So x to the fourth minus six x squared plus four. And this is where we are. So now what do we do from here? We can use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formulas are technically only for things that have a power of x squared, but we can treat this as a quadratic and find the solutions for x squared, which conveniently is the form that we want to be in at the end. So we can do that. So the quadratic formula is x squared equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And we could factor, we should always try to factor first, but if you look at this, it doesn't factor nicely at least. So b is negative 6. So it's 6 plus or minus b squared 36 minus 4 times 1 times 4 or minus 16 divided by 2a or 2 times 1, 2. So now we have 6 plus or minus root 20, which is 2 root 5, divided by 2. So we get 3 plus or minus root 5. And since we're given that x squared is the plus form of this equation, our answer is 3 plus root 5, or a plus b is 8. And 3 plus root 5 corresponds to x squared, while 3 minus root 5 corresponds to y squared, because they're both solutions in this equation. So our answer is 8. Does anyone have any questions? Um, wait, can you repeat the quadratic formula again? Yeah, this, the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a because the general form for a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. So a, b, and c are the coefficients. Okay. So what is everyone's answer for 29? 2,7. 2,7. 2,7. So yeah, the correct answer is 2,7. 
And the easiest way to do this, even if it's arithmetically difficult, is to just convert 9 factorial to base 9 and then do what the question asks you to do. So 9 factorial is, but if you need, you need to know up to 6 factorial for math counts minimum, but that's 7, that's, tw that's 20, that's 720. And then we have 7 times 8 times 9. So since a calculator isn't allowed in a sprint round, you're going to have to be clever with what arithmetic you choose to do. So 7 times 7 is 5040. And then we, you can do 5040 times 72. And you get 362880. And now we need to convert that to base 9. So in base 9, what are our, what are our place values? One nine eighty one. One nine eighty one. Seven two nine. Seven twenty nine. Yeah. So we have one. One nine eighty one. Seven two nine. Seven twenty nine. And then seven twenty nine times nine is six five six one. And then that times nine is five nine zero four nine. You don't need to do this off the top of your head, you can just do the arithmetic. So we want to find what's the largest possible power that can fit in. And if we multiply this by nine, it gets to be in the forty five hundreds with forty five in the four fifty thousands, which is clearly too big. So this is our best possible answer. This is our highest possible power. And then if we approximate, we can find we know that 59,000 times 6 is 354,000. So the maximum power of 9 to the 9 to the 5th that fits in is 6. And then now we do the subtraction. 362880 minus 354294 which when you do the math is 8586. And then how many 8586s fit into 6561? One. Zero. One. One. Because 6561 fits in once and then it gets too big after that. So what we have left is 2025. So how many 2025s do you estimate fits into 729? Two. 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 Yes, two, because that would be 1458. 729 times three is 2187, so that's a little too big. So 1458, so subtracted from 2025, and you get 567. So how many times does 567 fit into 81? Um, seven. Seven. Yeah, it's seven because 81 times seven is 567. And now we've exhausted our number, so nine and one just get zeros. And now the question was asking for how many zeros the number ends in, two, and the last non-zero digit, seven. So converting can be a little difficult, but it answers our question quite nicely. So does anyone have any questions? No. No. All right, so number 30. So what is everyone's answer for 30? I didn't really get that one. Yeah, it is a little difficult for good reason because it, it's hard to get to number 30 in the first place and then getting it right is another matter. But now we'll look at it. So vertices A, 0, 5, graphed here, 12, 0, graphed here, and the origin, and the coordinate point. 
and the image is rotated clockwise about the origin and the how it's rotated isn't really specified like what degree but we know that the image of a is three four which is also right and we want to find the which area of the rotated triangle is below the x-axis so last week we learned about rotations but this isn't any of the rotations in the stretch it's not 90 or 270 so we're going to have to think about how it's rotated and apply that to the point 12 0. so it's like it's rotated as if it's a pythagorean triple because 0 5 is five units from the origin and 3 4 is also five units from the origin except not vertically it forms a 3 4 5 right triangle so we have to think about the other points as forming an imaginary 3 4 5 right triangle with the hypotenuse or the length of our side being corresponding to the five side. So can anyone tell me if the hypotenuse is 12 and it's three, four, five right triangle, what the other two lengths would be? Don't worry about the signs or anything, just what, what are the lengths? Would they be fractions? Fractions, right? Yeah, they're fractions. fractions. Yeah, they can be fractions. Mm -hmm. Four, three, times 36 over 5, 48 over 5, and 12. That would be correct. So, in some capacity or order or signs, our, our x and y coordinates are going to be in decimal form 9.6 and 7.2. So, our 0, 5 is rotated forward like this. So we have to rotate our 12, 0 also like this, which means it's going into the fourth quadrant, where the y value is negative. So once you do the rotation, you get 9.6 comma negative 7.2. And then, now we have our triangle, which is drawn here. And we need to find what fraction of the area is below the x-axis. So it crosses the x-axis at this point. Let's just call it z. And we want to find wh what fraction of the way through vertically z is of this length. So what is the vertical distance from four to negative 7.2. Don't we need to use both coordinates for the distance formula? We're not doing the distance formula. We're just looking at which, at what fraction of the way Z is on, on the side length to see what fraction of the triangle is positive. So the length vertically is four to nine point six. It's eleven point two because we're going to be subtracting four minus minus seven point two because that's our y coordinate. So it's eleven point two. And four of that length is positive. So it's going to be four over eleven point two or 1 over 2.8, which is 5 over 14. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So now we just, now we figured out what fraction of the triangle is positive. That is 5 over 14. So by that logic, what fraction is negative? 9 over 14. 9 over, Nine over 14. Yep, and correspondingly, we have our answer. It's a little tricky to come up with a strategy for this question, which is why it's number 30. But 
in the end, you just use the side, the fractions of the side length and apply that to the area. Does anyone have any questions about the last 15 problems? No. All right, so now we're going to be moving on to doing a few problems for the workouts. So what um, is, can, yeah? can you please tell me what the first 16 answers were? Yeah, I um, yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. So problem number one is 270. Number two is 15. Three is 36. Four is 35. Five is 48. Six is eight. Seven is 103. Eight is 32. Nine is four. 10 is two. And 11 is 70. Um, 12 is 72. 13 is 288. 14 is 48. And 15 is 60. Thank you. All right, so what is everyone's answer for number one on the workout? 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. What, uh, what was number 13? Number 13 was 288. 320 times 0.9. So how you do this question is you set up an algebraic equation. So the first, the year in, the, in which the first movie was released is defined as x. And then we have x plus 3, x plus 6, x plus 9, x plus 12, and x plus 15. So when you add this up, you get that 6x plus 45 equals 12,057. So 6x equals 12,012, 12, and then x by itself equals 2. And then we want to find x plus 18 because that's the next year the seventh movie is released. So 2002 plus 18, 2020. And so what is everyone's answer for 2? 25.8%. 25.8% for what number 142, right? 34.8. 24.8. So it's 25.8. So what we do is we have thir 36 pounds of cash for 56.25. So those are the costs. And once we find the total money that, that was made, we have to subtract and we have to subtract that from 56.25. And then the cashews are divided into smaller bags, each containing three-eighths of a pound. So we need to find how many of those bags there are. So that's 36 divided by three over eight, or 36 times eight over three, which is 12 times eight, or 96. So then we do 96 times the 79 cents per bag, and we get 75.84. So 75.84 minus 56.25 is going to be 19.59. And then that's the profits divided by the 75.84 that was made. And when you do that on your calculator, you get 25.8%. Any questions? No. no. So what is everyone's answer for three? 18.9 minutes. 19.2 minutes. 18.3 minutes. 26.4. Can I see? 18.3. What? Can I see 142 again? Um, yes.
So our question is asking how many minutes it takes her to travel from mile marker 7 to 29, which is 22 miles. And she traveled at a speed of 72 miles per hour. So her minutes is 22 over 72 or 11 over 36 times 60 for converting to minutes because that's in hours. And we get 660 over 36 or on the calculator, 18.3 minutes. So yeah. So what is everyone's answer for 144? 24, 24, 24 Jersey 24, cows. 24. Would anyone like to explain? Okay, so if 90 cows are there and one third are Guernseys, that means there are 30 Guernsey cows. If two fifths of the um, 90 cows is Holstein, that means 90 times two over five, or 180 over 5 or 36 are Holsteins and then if you add 30 plus 36 66 and then subtract that from 90 you get 24. That would be a good strategy but if you really really want to be fast you can just add up the fractions one third plus two fifths or 5 over 15 plus 6 over 15, 11 over 15. Subtract that from the total. So you know that 4 over 15 of the cows are jerseys. And then you only need to do one multiplication 4 over 15 times 90, 6 for 24. So if you want to save some time, that's another way you can do it. And Final question for today. What is 77% of 90? 69.3. Yep. And, and if you don't really want to do this on the calculator, you can just do 7.7 .7 times 9 by moving the decimal place of 91 back and 7 and on 77 forward one. So then that 63 plus 6.3 is 69. Um, but how would you do that on a calculator? You don't need to do that on the calculator. And it's, if you want to save time because these kinds of questions are not too challenging, it's probably easy, easiest to just do this quickly like on paper. Okay. So next week we'll continue with the workouts and I will send a target round to you as well from the chapter. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Yeah.